As always, we view this as event as one in which fine food and beverages will be enjoyed in a relaxed and convivial atmosphere. Tonight's Xianan Fan, which includes more than 140 guests from Taiwan government, is made possible in large part by the generosity of our key sponsors. We'd like to thank our sponsors now. Our platinum sponsors, Citibank Taiwan and Franklin Templeton Investments. Our gold sponsors, Corning Taiwan, Micron Technology, Microsoft, and Semi. Our silver sponsors, Bechtel Group, GE Vernova, Gilead Sciences, HSBC Bank, Invisalign, and the Standard Chartered Bank. Our bronze sponsors this evening are 3M Taiwan, Air Products Sanfu, Amgen Taiwan, Baker and McKenzie, Google, Johnson and Johnson, Merck, Moderna, Pfizer, and Qualcomm. Our general sponsors this evening are AstraZeneca Taiwan, Dell Technologies Taiwan, Dun and Bradstreet, IBM, Intel, JTI, Novartis, P&G Taiwan, Philip Morris Taiwan, and the Tobacco Institute of the Republic of China. Of course, we would also like to thank our beverage sponsors for the evening. The Mortlock 16-year-old single malt scotch whiskey is provided by Diageo, and the Manaqua alkaline water is provided by the Coca-Cola Company. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Now, in a few minutes, President Tsai will be arriving, and so we would like to ask everyone to take your seats now and please remain in your seats when the President arrives. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, may we ask you to take your seats now. The President will be arriving in just a few moments, and we would like everyone to be seated and to remain seated when the President arrives. Thank you.
哎，跟跟各位大哥讲一下，等一下那个时间的部分啊，就是地方的到访就。但知道他要。
Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The president will be arriving in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we remind you to please take your seat. The president will be arriving in just a moment.
Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to the President of the Republic of China, Her Excellency Tsai Ing-wen. Please welcome to the podium AmTam Taiwan President Patrick P. Lin. President Tsai, Director Oatkirk, esteemed members of the AmCham Board, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight for our 56th annual Xianian Fan. My name is Patrick Lin, and I am the President of the American Chamber of Commerce here in Taiwan. It is my distinct honor to introduce our 2024 Chairperson, Mr. Dan Silver. Many of you know Dan as he has been an active and engaged AmCham member for over a decade. Previously, he served as chairperson in 2016, was a founding co-chair of a public health committee, as well as a leader in the medical devices committee. AmCham today is successful in no small part due to Mr. Silver's visionary leadership in addressing multiple complex challenges we have faced. Dan is one of the most passionate champions of Taiwan I have ever met. He truly cares about Taiwan, U.S. relations, and our community. Under Dan's guidance, AmCham has played a vital role in shaping Taiwan's business landscape, including helping Taiwan become a leader in good regulatory practices. As a founding director of the Taiwan Advanced Medical Technology Association, Dan has been instrumental in driving innovation and excellence in the medical technology sector, reinforcing Taiwan's position as a leader in the global healthcare industry. Tonight, as we gather to celebrate our shared successes and the journey ahead, we are privileged to have Dan lead the way. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Chairperson Dan Silver to the stage. Thank you, Patrick. President Tsai, Director Oakirk, distinguished guests, chamber members, Good evening, and welcome to AmCham's 56th Xianian Fan. It is an honor to be here with you tonight as we celebrate another successful year as Taiwan's most influential business, inter international business organization. On behalf of the Board of Governors and our more than 1,200 members, many of you here tonight, I'd like to thank everyone involved in organizing this flagship event. Let's give a round of applause for the unwavering support of staff in making this evening possible. <laughs> AmCham Taiwan has held this event for 56 years, but few moments have been as favorable for business and international exchange as today. Taiwan has once again demonstrated that it is one of the best places anywhere to do business. Our members' dedication to this market is a testament to the opportunities that are available here. 92% <clears throat> of our members plan to maintain or expand their investments in Taiwan in the year 2024, according to our latest AmCham Business Climate Survey released in January. These investments include new offices, research and development, staff expansions, and even tickets to our Shaniam Fan, which in recent years has become an incredibly popular investment. I have it on good authority that tickets to tonight's event sold out faster than a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> and I dare say that Shaniam Fan is much more economical than what Singapore paid. This past year has seen not only investments in dollars, but also new momentum in the U.S.-Taiwan relationship. Last year, we were delighted to see the first agreement under the U.S.-Taiwan Initiative on 21st Century Trade. We've also seen progress on double taxation avoidance, an issue that has been a long-standing area of advocacy for AmCham. 
a record number of visits by members of the U.S. Congress, including several today, executive agencies, governors, think tanks, and the opening of new state offices are prime demonstrations of the commitment to Taiwan from across the Pacific. An impressive 20 U.S. states and Guam now have offices here. AmCham believes that a comprehensive bilateral trade agreement would be optimal for both sides. We will continue to press the case. At AmCham, we believe that every sincere effort to strengthen engagement between the U.S. and Taiwan should be actively and urgently embraced. The Taiwan Fellowship Act is one such effort. This act symbolizes a profound commitment to mutual understanding and cooperation. Last weekend, President Biden signed into law a new spending package that includes additional funding for this act. The TFA gives Taiwan the authority to decide which department U.S. fellows will work in. It strategically enhances the partnership with the United States, and it is rooted in the spirit of reciprocity, paving the way for meaningful exchange of expertise and insights. We hope that it will be implemented without further delay. There's never been a better time to take action. Taiwan has positioned itself as a leader willing to foster closer relationships with like-minded partners, ensuring strength through prosperity and interconnectedness. This January, we witnessed another exemplary election, paving the way for a smooth transition of power. This is a testament to the strength of Taiwan's democracy. As an American, I've come to learn that transitions, transitions of power can sometimes be a little rocky. And speaking of smooth transitions, please join me in applause for Vice President-elect Bi Kim Xiao, who is with us tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Taiwan has moved from the periphery of the democratic world to the very center of it. It is a global role model. It falls on all of us to ensure that Taiwan maintains this positive attention and is not sidelined. We hope that Taiwan will continue to innovate and expand its industries. This is what propels its economy ever forward. To do so, Taiwan can deepen the spirit of good regulatory practice. It can reinforce a consultative, innovation-friendly, and agile business environment that cements its position on the world stage. Taiwan can lead the way in future-oriented regulations that respond to the world's emerging technologies. AmCham and the U.S. business community believe that good regulatory practice is what creates effective blueprints for the future. With that in mind, I want to take this moment to express our gratitude for the very constructive relationship we enjoy with the Taiwan government. As you can see here tonight, this government values engagement with industry. Among you sit about 150 government officials and representatives. They come from a wide range of agencies and roles. Their presence tonight showcases the broad support the Chamber enjoys. We are honored to have this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you to each one of you, and thank you for attending tonight's Shane Yan Fan. I want to express my gratitude especially to the National Development Council and Minister Gong Minxin. Thanks to your coordination efforts, we have just concluded a series of meetings addressing our white paper issues. Thank you, Minister Gong. The Chamber looks forward to working even more closely with the government. We want to help foster a business environment that aligns with international standards and is an inspiration for the region. Naturally, our Chamber could not have thrived into its 73rd year, the second oldest in the Asia-Pacific region, without the help of another critical partner. We are grateful to our good friends at AIT and the strong support from Director Oudkirk. Under your leadership, Director Oakirk, AIT has become a more open, approachable, and dynamic institution, ready to engage with both private and public interlocutors. We particularly appreciate your support for diversity and inclusion, women in business, and your tireless efforts to strengthen U.S.-Taiwan cybersecurity collaboration. 
As you move to your next endeavor, you will be missed here, and there will always be a slice of pecan pie for you at the AmCham office. <laughs> Lastly, I want to extend my sincerest appreciation to Her Excellency President Tsai for joining us and delivering tonight's keynote remarks. As Patrick mentioned, I was chairperson in 2016, the year President Tsai was first inaugurated. So this is something of a full circle moment for me, and what in eight years it has been. Since 2016, AmCham membership has grown by 20%. Taiwan's GDP has grown by an even more impressive 39%. But I should remind you that it is not a competition. <laughs> President Tsai, you have truly distinguished yourself as a leader in the free world during your time in office. Through active engagement, with an open mind, your administration has been a tremendous friend to AmCham. You have continuously demonstrated your commitment to our members, and for that, and for your outstanding leadership, we extend our sincere thanks. It is my pleasure to host you again this evening in my capacity, in my capacity as chairperson of AmCham. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson Silver, for all of your remarks and particularly noting the smooth transition that we can all expect here in Taiwan, as we now have a smooth transition on the podium to prepare the stage for the President. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Her Excellency President Tsai Ing-wen to the podium. Anchan uh, Taiwan Chairperson uh, Mr. Dan Silver, Anchan Taiwan President Patrick Lane, and AIT Director Sandra Orchard. And of course, uh, um, we have the company of uh, Vice President elect Xiao Meiqing, who is here uh, with us tonight. And um, we also have Deputy Speaker of the Legislative Yuan, Jiang Xichen, here with us as well. Um, and I have seen quite a number of our um, members of the legislative yang here. Would you stand up uh, so that people would know that we have so many of you here? <laughs> and my colleagues at the presidential office and the executive yang. Uh, would you stand up, uh, the colleagues uh, at the presidential office and also uh, the executive yeah. Yes, thank you. And Mayor of the Taichung City, Wu Xiu Yan. And, um, and of course, members of the American Chamber of Commerce in Taiwan. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is a pleasure to be here for my eighth Xianyan Fan, hosted by the American Chamber of Commerce Taiwan. <laughs> Meaning, I'm coming to say goodbye to you as president. <laughs> it is also heartening. Uh, that for eight straight years I have been able to sit down with you all for a nice meal and good conversation. So thank you again for making this night such a welcoming tradition. For over 70 years, MCHAN has given Taiwan its steadfast support, but more than that, it has been an essential link connecting Taiwan with the United States and the global community. To start off, there are a few people here tonight I want to recognize. First, of course, I want to congratulate Mr. Dan Silver, took over as M. Chen chairperson for the second time. He served as chairperson in 2016, and during that time he worked with our government agencies in bettering our relevant regulatory practices. 
I'm sure that with his leadership and experience, he will help make the business environment here in Taiwan even more friendly. And I also want to take a moment to recognize MCM President Mr. Patrick Lane, having taken on this role last July, President Lane brings with him an impressive record. And I look forward to seeing him draw on his experience to push our economic relations even further ahead. And above all else, I give my heartfelt thanks to M. Chang, its leadership and all its members for everything you have done for Taiwan. The success of the Taiwan-US partnership is in no small part thanks to your efforts. In the, all right. In the past few years, we have navigated through many trips and terms, from US-China trade tensions to unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We have witnessed events that have shaken up the global political order and sparked widespread inflation. Nevertheless, Taiwan has emerged from these challenges stronger. We have continued on a path of stable economic growth, showing just how resilient and adaptable our economy, our industry, and our people really are. And this was especially true during the pandemic, which challenged and tested countries' ability to provide help to one another. Amidst these troubles, Taiwan stepped up and offered support. Our Taiwan Can Help initiative sent a clear message that is, Taiwan will not be a passive bystander. Rather, we will continue to be a responsible member of the international community. Whenever the world is faced with a crisis, it can count on Taiwan to make a difference. Now, thanks to the joint efforts of the government and the people these past eight years, Taiwan has met the challenges facing us head on and has continued to see steady growth. Taiwan's GDP stayed on an upward train, nearing 760 billion US dollars in 2023 and over mm, 30 percent, that's too conservative, 39 percent <laughs> increase from 2016. <laughs> Similarly, we have seen tremendous development in the Taiwan Stock Exchange. I'm sure you have all seen the TIEX rise over 20,000 points for quite some time. And this is more than two times the figure from 2016. I don't know how many of you have invested in the Thai, Taiwan stock market. Uh, if you do, congratulations. <laughs> um, and I would like to thank you for contribution to our revenue. Uh, the finance um, situation in Taiwan has been rather okay with your contribution as uh, investors in the stock market. Overall, Taiwan's economy has maintained robust performance. From 2016 to 2023, we averaged over 3.1% economic growth, outpacing the global average. And in 2021, we saw a record 6.62%. We're very glad to have you with us along the way and appreciate your continued confidence in Taiwan. That confidence is reflected in MCHEN's 2024 Business Climate Survey. Over 80% of the respondents expressed optimism for Taiwan's economic prospects and also for business revenue growth. In fact, optimism for those two items surged by 10% since last year. And as mentioned by Mr. Silver just now, 20% of 
the respondents said that they are looking to maintain or increase their investment in Taiwan in the next year. It is also encouraging that in the international institutes for management developments, that's IMDs, World Competitiveness uh, Ranking, Taiwan has risen for five straight years, ranking six overall in 2023. And in the Heritage Foundation's recent index of economic freedom, Taiwan ranked fourth in the world for the second years in a row. It is fair to say that across various metrics, Taiwan is proving resilient and reliable in the face of uncertainty. I would like to thank you for your vote of confidence and assure you that we are doing our utmost to put Taiwan in the best possible position so that we can remain competitive. As of this month, our three major programs for investing in Taiwan have helped bring in over 70 billion US dollars in home-bound investments and more than 150,000 jobs. And since 2016, we have implemented several plans, such as our forward-looking infrastructure development program, six core strategic industries policy, and Taiwan's pathway to net zero emission in 2050, all aimed at future-proofing our infrastructure and industries. Just in green transition, for instance, we are seeing our policy work pay off. Taiwan's overall installed capacity for renewable energy is now 3.8 times what it was in 2016, with a seven-fold growth in wind and solar. As far back as 2017, the year we designated as year zero for Taiwan's AI industry, we began drafting policies for AI development. Our AI Taiwan Action Plan and its updated version, the Action Plan 2.0, have helped to prepare Taiwan for this growth industry. Infrastructure and technology are crucial, but the real heart of excellence in Taiwan is in the people. That is why these past several years we have been doing even more to strengthen our human capital. Launched in 2018, our Taiwan Employment Go Card makes it easier for international talents to live and work in Taiwan. To date, over 9,000 of these cards have been issued. Last November, we established our International Talent Taiwan Office. This one-stop facility provides services to foreign professionals, ranging from visa application to even their children's education. Together with other programs like the Go Card, the office is part of our efforts to make Taiwan a hub for world-class talents. The government has also worked with the industry to establish six semiconductor institutes at our top universities. There are more institutes in the pipeline, gearing towards AI, smart manufacturing, circular economy, and others. These institutes are to provide advanced training to bridge the gap between the university education and the skills and training that the industry requires. Of course, in these efforts, we cannot overstate the part played by the Taiwan Enduring Partnership with the United States. This year will mark the 45th anniversary of the Taiwan Relations Act. This legislation has been the cornerstone of maintaining peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. The Taiwan Relations Act has also brought Taiwan and the U.S. closer. Over the last four decades, the U.S. has become our second largest trading partner, while Taiwan is the eighth largest trading partner of the United States. And the U.S. is Taiwan's largest, third largest source of foreign capital. 
In recent years, there have been even greater steps to forward for our trade ties through the Taiwan-U.S. Economic Prosperity Partnership Dialogue and the Taiwan-U.S. Technology Trade and Investment Collaboration Framework. We are bolstering cooperation in supply chains and green transition. Also, just last month, we signed an MOU on international development cooperation. The highlight of recent years was, of course, the signing of the first agreement under the Taiwan-U.S. Initiative on the 21st Century Trade. The second round of negotiation is ongoing, and future agreements will only make firmer foundations for our partnerships. Like many here tonight, I look forward to the efforts we have made together in resolving the issue of double taxation between Taiwan and the U.S., producing concrete results soon. For that, I remain optimistic, and I must give a special thanks to M. Chen for his consistent advocacy through such channels as its white paper. I'm also delighted by the progress we have made with the different state governments in the United States. Last March, Arizona opened its trade and investment office in Taiwan, and Virginia opened its office last September. New Jersey has planned to have its own office here, and Michigan just this month announced its first ever Taiwan office. These offices will help deepen Taiwan-U.S. economic relations on the whole, and I welcome other U.S. states to set up offices here as well. It has been, without a doubt, a remarkable time for Taiwan-U.S. relations. All of it was made possible thanks to the work of so many people here in Taiwan and in the U.S. So tonight, I want to thank M. Chen and its members again for a fruitful eight years. Thank you. Now, the future. On January 13 this year, Vice President Lai ching was elected as our next president. While no one can tell what the future has in store, I am confident to say that Taiwan will continue to stay on the right path to keep the political and economic landscapes stable and secure and to uphold continuity and stability in its policies we will advance steadily onwards thanks to the solid foundations that you all helped to lay. President-elect Lai has pledged with his national project of hope to make Taiwan more democratic and peaceful, innovative and prosperous, just and sustainable. Through that project, he hopes to continue the story of Taiwan's democratic success and make it a source of pride to the world. I'm sure that as we continue down the road of freedom and democracy, both Taiwan and Anchan will continue to reach new achievements and set even higher goals. So, thank you for the invitation to come here and I hoped um, that um, I talk about what happened in the eight years uh, while Mr. Silver was talking about just one year. But, but this is a good occasion for me to report to you what happened and what has been achieved in the last eight years. And, and it's proper that I use this time to say goodbye to you as president. And there's one thing I want to mention. When I first came here as president um, and, and listened to what the chair had to say, I don't think it was you. Um, 
about the policies and regulatory practices and, and a lot of other things about the government. I heard a lot of criticism. And it's so good tonight that I have heard nothing negative. <laughs> So thank you, Chairman Silva. You make it a warm uh, occasion for me. And um, I hope you all have a very pleasant evening. Thank you. Thank you, President Tsai, <clears throat> not only for your wonderful remarks, but also for all the excellent work of your administration for these past several years. And at MCHAM Taiwan, we are especially grateful for the effective handling of the COVID pandemic, which enabled AMCHAM to host this Xianian Fan each and every year. Thank you again. It's now my honor to invite Sandra Outkirk, Director of the American Institute in Taiwan, to the podium to share her remarks. Madam President, Dan, distinguished guests and friends, good evening. It is an honor to be with you again at the Xi'an Fan Gala Dinner. When I first took this stage two years ago, we were still in the throes of the pandemic. And what a long way we have come. No matter what metric you're tracking, it's clear we are in a much better place today and the future looks bright. Tonight, I will highlight several of the accomplishments that we've achieved together since I last took this stage. Then I'll look ahead and talk about our plans for 2024. I would like to begin by thanking President Tsai for her strong partnership and unwavering support. The past decade has seen a deepening and broadening of already strong ties between the United States and Taiwan. Over the course of President Tsai's tenure, the level of attention on and the frequency of visits to Taiwan by American lawmakers has hit an all-time high. According to a recent study published by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, between 2010 and 2020, an average of nine U.S. congressional delegations visited Taiwan every year. In 2023, that number spiked to 39 visits by members of Congress, more than triple the previous number of visits in any single year. Which brings me to my first topic, the growing trade and investment linkages between the United States and Taiwan. Taiwan was our eighth largest trading partner in 2023, with $127.5 billion worth of goods trade. And when you consider the relatively small population on the island, it is clear that Taiwan punches far above its weight in the global trading system. The optimism expressed by AmCham member companies in the 2024 Business Climate Survey reinforces this sentiment. As both Dan and Madam President have highlighted, 92% of survey respondents plan to maintain or increase their investment in Taiwan, with nearly half of the respondents reporting plans to hire more staff this year. This positive sentiment is again supported by the data, which shows U.S. foreign direct investment in Taiwan reached $16.7 billion in 2022. All of us understand that Taiwan is a reliable and trusted place for companies to invest and to do business. And that is why U.S. companies continue to expand their investments in Taiwan year after year. Whether it is a long-term U.S. investor similar to Micron, which recently opened an advanced packaging facility for its high bandwidth memory chips in Taichung, or Federal, uh, Federal, FedEx Express, which expanded its transshipment center at Taoyuan Inter International Airport last July, or newcomers, including the U.S. e-commerce platform Coupon or the energy storage provider Fluence. Each of these companies has demonstrated through their expanded presence here in the past few months that they increasingly find value in Taiwan as an investment destination. And of course, investment flows both ways, and we similarly welcome Taiwan's investments in the United States. In addition to trade, investment, and commerce, people-to-people -people ties are truly the foundation of our relationship. 
I wonder if any of you knew that Taiwan is the sixth largest source of international students in the United States. And so now I'm going to be interactive here. How many of you in the audience studied in the United States? Raise your hands. And now everybody keep those hands up. How many of those have a family member, an immediate family member, like a child who studied in the United States? Now, we look around the room and it is these shared experiences and connections that have facilitated the continued growth of the U.S.-Taiwan economic partnership. These are the ties, indeed, that bind. Last year at this event, I encouraged AmCham and its member companies to work with AIT to work on our shared values, to create programming activities and policies that support diversity in and inclusion. And I am happy to report that less than one year later, my AIT colleagues and I have joined AmCham at a number of programs and events. And our AIT DEA committee has been working for months with Amy Zhang to organize the AmCham AIT DEIA forum on April 18th, and I look forward to seeing many of you there. Over the course of the past year, we also reached significant milestones on several of our economic frameworks. First, we launched the inaugural Science and Technology Cooperation Dialogue in May of 2023 to focus on key policy priorities in semiconductor applications, biotechnology, cancer research, and environmental modeling. We signed the first agreement under the U.S.-Taiwan Initiative on 21st Century Trade last June. In December, we discussed economic coercion, tax-related barriers to two-way investment, and the energy transition in Taiwan at the fourth Economic Prosperity Partnership Dialogue. And importantly, during our APEC host year last year, we saw sizable delegations from Taiwan to the United States, including nine ministers and one deputy minister, showcasing Taiwan's leadership on a range of economic issues from transportation to health to energy. On the commercial front, AIT has enhanced its cooperation with AmCham in multiple in industries, including cybersecurity, healthcare, and energy. Last September, the Commerce Department organized a cybersecurity trade mission led by the National Institute of Standards and Technology Director, Dr. Lori Locasio. And finally, on outbound investment, last year, for the fifth year in a row, Taiwan had the world's largest delegation to the Select USA Investment Summit. Looking ahead, we, we have great plans for 2024. AIT will continue to collaborate with AmCham and our partners here in Taiwan to contribute to Taiwan's cyber and energy resilience. And we are looking forward to welcoming our second trade mission in two years, and this one will be focused on uncrewed aerial systems, or drones. In June, I plan to lead another very large Taiwan delegation to the Select USA Summit. The Taiwan delegation this year will include sub-delegations in the semiconductor, photonics and quantum, and biomedtech industry sectors. They will meet with universities, research centers, and potential partners in the newly designated tech hubs in Oregon, New York, Montana, Arizona, and elsewhere. We hope that through building these industry partnerships, we will lay the foundation for commercial and research collaboration that will lift both economies and further link our industries in a number of next generation technologies. As many of you are aware, this will also be my last Xi'an Fan. It has been an honor to serve in Taiwan as the AIT director, and it's been an honor to come back here for the second time in my career. I would also like to thank President Tsai for her steadfast support of U.S.-Taiwan ties over the course of her tenure. We look forward to working with President-elect Lai and Vice President-elect Xiao and Taiwan's leaders of all parties to advance our shared interests and values and to further our longstanding unofficial partnership. We are confident that Taiwan will continue to serve as an example for all who strive for freedom, democracy, and prosperity. Allow me to close by stating that AIT is committed to continuing to work with our partners in Taiwan, and AmCham Taiwan is one of the most important of those partners. We will confront together shared challenges and work towards making progress on our collective goals. It is an honor to join you again tonight I look forward to working with you to further strengthen our partnership in the months ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Director Oudkirk. If we could ask you to please remain on stage for a minute.
Each year, AmCham Taiwan presents a special token of our appreciation to our Xianyan Fan keynote speakers. Now I'd like to invite Chairperson Dan Silver of AmCham Taiwan to present the gifts. This year, we were inspired by the prevalence of AI and how it promises to unlock innovation and economic benefits. We're encouraged by the creative potential of this new technology. We'd also like to particularly thank Meta Theory and Kevin Lin, who helped in the post-production. For Director Oudkirk, we referenced elements of her home state of Florida, her interest in cycling, international diplomacy, semiconductor chips, and of course, that most American of desserts, pecan pie. Thank you, Director Oudkirk. Thank you, Director Oudkirk. We'd now like to invite President Tsai back to the stage. For President, for President Tsai's gift, we included elements of both her accomplishments during her two terms in office, from green energy, human rights, and the 21st century trade, as well as more personal aspects, such as her love of drip coffee and, of course, cats. And now we'd like to invite Director Oudkirk back to the stage so that we may all join in a toast. Oh, first having a photo of the three. <laughs> Thank you. And now if you would all join in raising a glass to make a toast. Let's toast to prosperity and health in the coming year. Cheers. Thank you, President Tsai, Director Oudkirk, and Chairperson Silver. You may now return to your seats. Once again, we would like to thank the government officials and guests for attending tonight's events. We will now invite the following guests to come forward for the first group photo. Minister Xue Fu Sheng, Minister Zhuang Ziyun, Spokesperson Lin Zilun, Mayor of Taichung City, Mayor Lu Xiuyan, Vincent Shi, Shelley Jia, Minister Xue Yuan, Minister Tsai Qingxiang, Andrea Wu, and Cynthia Chen, Dan Silver, Vice President-Elect Xiao Bi Kim, Secretary General Lin Jia Long, Vice President Jiang Qi Chen, Minister Gong Ming Xin, Secretary General Wellington Gu, Patrick Lin, Minister John Deng, and Minister Joseph Wu. Please come forward to the stage for the first group photo. President Tsai, Director Oudkirk, and Chairperson Silver, please join the guests on stage for the group photo.
Guests from the second photo, please get on the stage. Thank you. Uh, ministers and mayors. Thank you to the ministers and mayors. Uh, President Tsai, Director Outkirk and Chairperson Silver, please remain seated. We will now invite the AmCham board members to come forward for the second group photo. <laughs> 